The thief watches your sowing account the same way that God watches your sowing account. And everybody has principalities and powers in their region that are responsible for looking for areas where you open up so that they could accomplish hellish havoc on someone's life, accomplish things that's not supposed to happen. The same way sowing brings you into the will of God being supplied to you, the same way not sowing the way that God wants you to sow supplies the will of Satan to your life. Relationships, having mindsets, mental attacks, things that go on mentally that disturb you. There's not a hedge around someone's mind when they're not led by the spirit. So oftentimes people, they defy God's instruction and what he says, but then the consequence becomes overbearing, overwhelming, because demons not gonna play fair. They're not gonna play fair when you resist God. They know that that's their cue to take your mind another direction. So always remember this. There is a sowing that God calls for every day of your life. And that sowing that you walk in towards God is protecting you from mental breakdowns, health breakdowns, and financial breakdowns. Now, the thief want to make God look like he's not a good caretaker. That's the goal. The thief's goal is to make it look like the father doesn't know how to take care of his children and treat them good. That's the thief's goal. So when the thief is in operation, the thief wants to take your mind into sin so that the results will come back with negativity. You know, have you ever take a test and then come back negative? Well, negativity, like you'll experience negativity in your life so the thief can mock God concerning you and make the world believe that the Lord is not good so that the world will continue following Satan. So the thief has an agenda to take the reputation of God so that the Lord will not look like a good father. So a non-sower is someone that's in partnership with the devil to slander God's character. A, a, a non-sower is in partnership with the devil to slander God's reputation to make it look like the Lord is not good. So if you think about the whole ministry of Korah, Korah made it look like Moses was doing them wrong when Moses was bringing them out with their silver and gold. And the reason why Moses is so powerful because he took the blame for God. That's why a prophet is a mighty person because God uses them to take the blame for him. That's why the prophets always get persecuted. Thus saith the Lord, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, we're going to lock you up. Well, lock you up. We're taking the blame. That's why prophets, a prophet of God is carrying a limited grace unlimited power to give to you. Korah's ministry was to make it look like Moses was doing the people of God wrong because Korah was filled with Satan to stop the financial plan of God in their life. Korah was filled with spirits. So when you deal with Korah, you're not dealing with just an avenue of a man that made a mistake. You're dealing with a man that's possessed. 
by spirit so that you can understand what is the agenda of spirits, evil spirits, unclean spirits. They don't want you to submit to the prophet of God, to help the prophet of God, to honor the prophet of God, to be loyal to the prophet of God, to respect the prophet of God, because they don't want the prosperity to come to you. The prosperity is in serving and pleasing the prophet. So if you look at Korah, you'll understand how Satan's roadmap is. What does Satan plan? Satan plans, I need to get you away from the prophet of God. And how does Satan do that? Mind, just mind, that's all, just mind. Your mind is disconnected from the prophet. Korah revealed that Satan is jealous of the financial economy that's reserved for the sower. The Lord has a financial economy reserved for you that you can withdraw from all throughout your life in different levels. It's not one level, it's not two level, it's not seven level, it's not 10 levels. The levels do not have an end to them. The financial reserve in God's government is greater than any stimulus check that you have ever received or saw in this world. It's greater than any social security check. It's greater than any food stamps. It's greater than anything that you have seen according to this world setup. God's economy does not have any restraint or restriction to it. God actually likes being uh, wild when it comes to wealth. The Lord don't want to be moderate when it comes to money. Did you know that even when you work at your job, the money that you make at your job is not the hundredfold return? The money that you make at your job is school money. God tests you with that money to see, do you want the real money? And then he also gives you that money so that you can worship him. God gets worship when you take natural things, things that are physical, and you offer them up to him. That's how God gets worship. So the Lord put you in a physical earth, gave you a physical body, and gave you physical things so that you could physically worship him in the spirit. So that's why I'm saying no man could sow into God and worship God without money because money is going to come to you as he ministers seed to you so that you could sow into him because he wants an encounter with you. God wants to encounter you. Um, if a person looks at another person and they desire the person, not only do they desire the person, but they crave, they crave an encounter with the person. They want to get the person's attention. They want some type of encounter. They want to talk with the person. They want the person to see them. So the next stage of desire is encounter. When I was a little child, well, when I was younger in years, what is considered a child? I innocently forgot I had all type of uh, letters inside of my, uh, my, my pants pocket. And my pants pocket had letters from girls. Now it had slipped my mind because I wasn't thinking about that. My mind was somewhere else. When I got home, you know, you know a, woman, a woman is a, a private investigator. So my mother would go and say, when, when she was washing her clothes, it was innocent. She, she went inside my pants to take out anything that I had in there. And I, it was full of girls' letters. 
Now I was in I wasn't in the wrong. I ain't write nobody no letter. I didn't respond to him. I forgot that it was inside my pants. Now it was from this girl and this girl and this girl. So it was an embarrassing moment when my mother came to me and my mother was like, I'm coming down to the school to come talk to this girl. She thinks she's gonna get Mama, 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 please, mama. Mama, please, mama, please. I... Your mamas be wanting to fight little children. Want to box them in the back. Bow! Box them in the back all the time. It's tough. You see little children running around the school like Hitler was in there. Ah! Mama, mama running through the school with a machete. Throwing shoes and heels at them. Stilettos at Was throwing all this. Children running through the aisles. Throwing machetes, you know, and mess with wrong mamas. And her mom bring out the shotgun, throwing throwing shots in the air. Pow, pow, pow. Everybody running and running. Everybody, she outside, like Madea, standing on the car. Pow, pow, pow. So it, it, it was embarrassing when my mother would say, Who, who is this right here? Mama, this is a, it's a Kiki. It's Kiki. Uh, uh, mama, there's Kiki right there. It's Kiki. And who is this one? Mama, that's a, that's, Mama, that's your name. And who is this one, right? Mama. That one right there. Mama, this. Mama, this. This. Oh. That's Jonathan. Ah! So what Satan does is go some. What Satan does is use you to embarrass God's reputation in providing for you. Because Satan knows that the Lord has a powerful dynamite strategy and setup is it's atomic. The, the economic system of God is fortified strong and it's never been defeated by any opposition or opponent. So Satan knows that. Satan doesn't want you to meditate because see, that's what Joshua was being told by the Lord. If you want to make your way prosperous, you meditate in the word day and night. That means think about my kingdom. Think about what I said. Think about my character. And this is how I materialize the life. So what happens when somebody is in lust, sin? What happens when they're in depression? Their brain is being occupied. They don't have time to think about that. Says I keep telling you, I don't fear nothing because I'm a sower. I don't fear jail. I don't fear death. I don't fear murder. I don't fear thugs. I don't fear rob. I don't fear nothing. I don't have one fear. I don't fear sickness or disease. I don't fear none of these things. You know why? It's not because of money. It's not because of fame. It's not because of stature, muscles. It's not because of physical health. None of those things. It's because the inward meditation of the living word. The inward meditation and God didn't give you the spirit of fear. So when you in fear, that means that you have accepted something that God didn't give you. And in all actuality, that's foolishness. In all actuality, that's foolishness. 
the financial plan of God for everybody's life. The financial plan of everybody's life, financial plan of God in everybody's life is in bold meditation and bold movements. Bold meditation and bold movements. Do you know what I mean by that? Not only is your mind steadfast on what the Lord said, but your body is corresponding with the information. There's a difference if you're thinking about ice cream and then you have the ice cream and you're eating the ice cream. So what's the difference? The difference is that you have moved from mind to movement, making decisions, and now manifestation is attached to the decision you're making. So say, I'm going to tell you like this here. Oftentimes, People, they hear about the prosperity of God and the wealth of God, but it's not inside of them because their movements will start corresponding with that type of anointing. Remember, it's the power to get wealth. So if it's the power to get wealth, that means that other powers are going to challenge this power. So if God give you the power to get wealth, there's other powers that are challenging the power to get wealth. So what's the major power that challenges the power to get wealth? The power of lust. Did you know Apostle Paul was talking about principalities and powers? Lust is in powers bracket. Depression is in powers bracket. That's why you see that when Elijah get depressed, he come underneath powers attacking his mind. So he's praying to die. That's what powers do. Powers is the area of the satanic brackets for witchcraft. Jealousy is in the area of powers. That's why you see Cain being moved and the Pharisees being moved so strong to arrest and stone Jesus. Some of you all believe that when Jesus is on the earth, that everybody that sees Jesus just drops. Every time Jesus shows up, ah! oh, that's Jesus right there. Huh? That's what you believe. You believe that. That's, that's not how it works. There was Pharisees arguing with Jesus while Jesus is standing right in front of them. They picked up stones to stone Jesus and the Bible said that Jesus escaped them. So Jesus ran away from them. So even your perspective of Jesus got to be correct. Even if God is in the room, he could demote his power in order for people to fulfill the evil that's in their heart. You know that, right? And that's scary. So even when Jesus is handing Judas the bread and handing Judas the meat, and he talking about somebody going to betray me. Judas didn't have a heart attack. Judas didn't have a cardiac arrest in the presence of Jesus. Judas was still breathing. His foot was still working. His toes were still working. His fingers were still working. His tonsils were still working. His oxygen was still going on in his body. His blood was still pumping in the veins. His brain was still functioning. That's the scary thing about Jesus is that he can lower his greatness so that your manifest your wickedness, so that you can see who you are. Glory to God. But you don't want that. You don't want it. <laughs> you don't want it. You don't want that. I promise you. Glory to God. You don't want it. You don't want it. It's better to kiss the sun. It's better to kiss the sun. It's better to kiss the sun. You don't want that. You want you want the 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 lavish life, Jesus. You don't want the rage in Jesus. The Bible said in Revelation that they was going to mourn at his appearance. 
The whole earth was mourning. Do you know what I mean? They was grieved. Do you know what that mean? That mean that they was upset, they was disturbed, they was scared, they was fearful. Why would you be scared and fearful? Because you know that is on. The Bible said that Jesus destroyed people with the breath of his mouth. People was dropping, bodies falling just because of breath. You don't want it. You don't want it. In eternity, you'll understand the concept that Jesus had many clones, that he clones himself in every generation, that he uses the body of a man to show his face, to show his identity, to show his heart, to give you a glimpse of his soul, to see how he lives, his lifestyle. In every generation, for Abram's generation was Melchizedek. For that wicked generation, there was Jeremiah, a young man. For the other generation, it was Isaiah. One generation is David. The other generation is Moses. The other generation is Elijah. The Bible said it was the spirit of Christ testifying out of the prophets. They was moved. At the end of your life, if you was to leave today, and you left your body today, you would know who I am by the Holy Ghost. You'll know who was talking to you all this time. Even when I joke around, even if I laugh around, even if I play basketball, everything that I'm doing, you would know. Oh, but Jesus didn't play basketball in that day. Tell me who in Jerusalem was playing basketball. Basketball was not invented yet. Basketball didn't exist yet. I was telling my sons, they wasn't naming the seeds certain stuff in the Old Testament because those things weren't invented. You only could be led by the spirit according to his creativity. And his creativity was not basketball in Exodus. Nobody knew about the treadmill in Leviticus. Go tell somebody in Leviticus if you see them in heaven. Did y'all run on the treadmill too when y'all was on earth? They look at you like, no. The treadmill came in y'all's day. We didn't have that. We walked on foot. The same way. You tell somebody, uh, you meet somebody in, in the Old Testament, oh, hey, hey, y'all ever received the Rolls Royce? They received the top horses. That was their actual Mustang. Now you got a Mustang with a horse on there. And, and we got vehicles, they call it horsepower. If I was to drive my vehicles, vroom, vroom, right back, and, and I, 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 I tell, and, I, and then I get translated, I tell Elijah, Elijah, you, you saw that vroom, vroom? You ever rode that vroom, vroom like that? Elijah would tell you, no, 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 no. We had donkeys. We had uh, camels. We had horses. We had different animals that we rode on. So on their day, remember what the Bible says in Genesis 13, verse two and on, uh, verse one through two and on. And Abram was very rich in silver and in cattle and in gold, silver and gold cattle. You see cattle, cattle was their form of provision, transportation, that was their martyr bus. That was their, their vehicles. And so when somebody had those type of vehicles, they also uh, um, would travel with those animals on their back. And they would, they would travel with those animals to get to point A to point B. But now you have actual vehicles. So when somebody was naming their seed back then, they may name it for cattle. But you're not going to name your seed for cattle because the invention has been upgraded. Glory to God. Glory to God. The new blood covenant has wealth and riches in it that's fresh. 
is greater than Solomon's. It's greater than Abraham. The new wealth covenant, the new testament, the new blood covenant is carrying a lifestyle of abundance that they never saw. And imagine, Abram was very rich, but Abraham never saw this glory while he was on earth. The glory of the spirit is way greater than the glory of the letter. And see, they was operating in harvests and multiplication off of the letter. But praise God, you're operating in abundance and wealth off of the spirits. 